Welcome to Bite Size Data Science. When it comes to writing code, there are many environments that can be used. This goes from using a simple text editor and command line execution to using an integrated development environment. One possibility, especially in data science projects, is to use something called a notebook. According to EMSI, the Jupyter Notebook had a 184% increase in job posting between September 2017 and September 2018. There are multiple notebooks that are popular, Zeppelin for example, but we'll stay with Jupyter in this video. A notebook is an interactive environment that allows for the mixing of documentation and live code. It is a web-based application used to develop, document, and execute code. It is also a way to communicate results. A notebook is part of many environments, including the ones supporting Spark, Hadoop environments, and data science platforms. In this short exploration of notebooks, I'm using the Jupyter Notebook in the IBM Watson Studio Cloud platform. If you want to learn more about that platform, look at this channel under Playlist. I have a playlist that describes Watson Studio's capabilities. Here is a notebook open in edit mode. The first thing you see is the Byte Size Data Science banner. This banner is in something called a cell. There are three types of cells, code, markdown, and raw. You will likely use mostly code and markdown. The banner is in a markdown cell. If I double click on the cell, I get into edit mode. We see that the banner content is an HTML statement that uses an image on GitHub. To display the banner, I execute the cell using the Run button. Markdown cells can use the Markdown markup language and HTML code. This allows for all sorts of formatting that can make the cell content professional publishing quality. You can easily create bulleted or numbered lists, add tables, format code with color-coded syntax. You can even display complex formulas. All this can make for great communication between team members. The other type of cell is the code cell. We see the code cell uses color and type style to make the code easier to read. The code is executed the same way we executed markdown cells. When a cell executes, you can see a star show up in the left of the cell. Once the execution is done, a number appears. This number represents the sequential number of executions within the notebook. If there is an output, it is displayed below the cell. In our case, the code created two outputs, one that displays the number of records in the data frame and the display of the first record. Any error would also be displayed in the output below the cell. The second cell execution does not generate any output. We see that the execution is completed once we see a number appear at the left of the cell. Finally, the third code cell creates a scatter plot of the location of accidents in the Chicago area over the time period covered by the input file. The output is created using the matplotlib library. Note that this is not a map. It simply uses longitude and latitude displayed in an XY diagram. Mapping libraries can be used if needed. We saw that notebooks provide a code development and execution that includes rich text to document what is being done and support output that can include graphics. The result could be shared with team members to facilitate communication within the project. There is more to notebooks. Feel free to investigate further on your own. We'll see more usage of notebooks in the future. See you next time on Bite Size Data Science.